he dedicated it to Jamaica, but when we met him at the uh, Ivory Coast Embassy, and we told him about the work we started here with Eugenia Charles, his father, J.B. Charles, who he graduated here in 1937. He donated right before Hurricane um, or Tropical Storm Erica, uh, 395 trees are up. And um, we, we hope to proliferate breadfruit and try to do a breadfruit institute so we can measure breadfruit in its uh, different uh, forms and, and try to utilize it in a way to aid the whole project for food security. So this is a great moment. I mean, to be right here at Sixth Form, which is where we used to be, and uh, to move away from what some people perceived some of the intellectuals of the day to be, just Ivory Tower, to be engaged in a practical manifestation of our seriousness about development. So thank you. It's a great team. And uh, Errol, I know you want to say a few words, Errol. And Dr. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Lloyd. Errol, it's about the development of the um, yeah, good, good afternoon. Um, what we are attempting to do is increasingly breadfruit is becoming a crop of importance. And with the whole question of climate change, there, there are things to learn from breadfruit. And so both myself and Dr. Lloyd, with Fukan, we're trying to work with the breadfruit crop. We introduce those varieties. But we recognize that we also have local varieties that may have very good benefits for flower, for chips, and so forth. And increasingly, there's research being done on breadfruit. Uh, there are certain things about breadfruit that can be used as a natural repellent for insects and so on. There is research being done on the medicinal properties that can be found in breadfruit. And so we are happy that we have started the initiative to sensitize the to the benefits of breadfruit and eventually to try to make an industry out of breadfruit. We also saw samples of breadfruit flour and there are so many things that can be done. We've, we've seen people making breadfruit punch already, there's breadfruit chips. Roast breadfruit is now being Don't done by the Jamaicans. The Jamaicans <laughs> are now roasting breadfruit, packaging it, and exporting it. So there's tremendous opportunities that we have, and we need to harness the opportunity and collectively see it as another area in which we can add value to a product and have uh, farmers growing it as a crop, as, a, as an economic crop. Increasingly, we learning more about the health benefits of breadfruit. It's been associated with reducing So it's actually be labeled now as a, as a health food. Okay? Um, so it's going back to, back to basics. This was an imported uh, uh, cultivar. We have, we have bread food that has been with us for a long time. And uh, better acclimatized to, to Dominican conditions. One of the things going forward is to evaluate our local diversity of bread food. There's some yellow types, there's some white types, there's some that taste good, there's some that probably um, don't taste as good. But we, we're not sure where they are and if we want that particular type of variety, where we can get it. So one of the, 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 the um, tasks that we want to do is to actually um, do some research on the local diversity of bread and in the way that the varieties that we come across that um, are desirable, you can propagate them and have them available so you can go and get that particular taste in breadfruit, wherever it is. is so um, you see people now, I think it was being sold there, breadfruit flour and so on. Um, um, I saw it at um, and so on. So increasingly, you know, it's, it's, we're moving in that direction. And this is the support there, we hope with the institute that um, support with regards to research and advice for people wanting to get into it at different levels would be able to help. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Dr. Lloyd, this is soil that is making breakfast.